Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Deep Thoughts. Today, we're going to talk about everything EMF, electromagnetic fields. And we're going to go through a deep dive on pretty much all wireless technology, but overall, the latest push for 5G networks. And there's a lot of people freaking out over about 5G for very good reasons. But if you've bought a home router in America in the last two years, you probably already have a 5G network in your house bombarding your body. Before we get into the absolute technology of it all and the differences of, say, 4G versus 5G and what's probably coming after that, we need to rewind here. Rewind to a perspective by which we can analyze the evolution a hundred and, say, 80 years ago, just beyond the telegraph technology, electricity going through wires of any kind, we have Earth in its almost pristine condition. And in that era, the only thing you have to pollute things would be factories, which in themselves were really just starting to become something that we were building in, in mass, right? Trains that barfed out coal clouds. Something very endearing about that smell for a kid from a uh, train town. So electromagnetic waves are something that exist in nature. And so you will hear arguments all the time when man takes something that has already existed in nature and then multiplies it times exponential factors such as fluoride naturally exists in tiny infinitesimal amounts in say black tea leaves but the amount that we uh, synthetically put in water and food and what have you is millions of times more dense there's that old saying you know just keep everything in moderation, you know. There's no moderation when man gets a hold of something and turns it into a profitable model. Electromagnetic waves have sadly proliferated the world with almost no regulation. The gentleman, Nikola Tesla, who really was the first commercial engineer of this technology, never lived long enough to see it come into fruition within his lifetime and especially not in a way that he could have laid down some research to say this is the way you can use it to not hurt yourself and this is the way you can use it to immediately get cancer and I have to say for those of you like myself who are big giant Tesla fans he wasn't a god right he didn't have everything researched he would sit in a room with amazing lightning around his body and there's the famous Paris uh, World, World's Fair, where apparently he encapsulated himself in plasma energy. And, you know, just because it doesn't kill you right away doesn't mean he wasn't exposing himself to some form of early lethal dose of electromagnetic energy. Perhaps he had thought it through and he could explain it to us to keep it from being lethal. But it, it is conclusive now conclusive without the shadow of a doubt that today's EMF transmissions are bad for the human body on so many levels that it's going to take an hour to get through a lot of their side effects as well as explaining sort of where we started with this whole thing. So when you want to talk about the dangers of something, you know, there's, there are dangers of things like, hey, don't go into the um, Canadian hills unless you know about black bears and grizzly bears and how to survive. The elements up there have been there for as long as we've been there. And so those, that's just a bunch of lessons you have to learn to keep yourself safe. 
when it comes to today's technology, we have a differential. What was it before for, you know, countless millennia, millions of years? And what have we done as human beings recently, the last 150 years? The average human body has 8 hertz of electricity. 8, okay? That means less than 10, all right? Your average 5G router in your house is operating at 10 billion hertz. Okay, we're going to get into all the medical uh, sort of atomic understanding of why this messes with your body because I don't hear that a lot and I don't know why because it's not that difficult for people to understand. Sort of like they either the person talking doesn't understand it or they think you're an idiot and um, hopefully neither is true. The earth during an, a lightning storm, if you were to measure the average hertz that you're experiencing, I have read it to be around 32 hertz. It's about 4x of the human body. And that's during a real exacerbated moment. The hertz of the earth on an average day, below 8 hertz. If you're just in a nice, quiet area, especially with a lot of water, there's no storms going on, there's no volcanic eruptions going on, you're on top of an aqua ravine like the Egyptians used to build their pyramids on top of. You hear me say the word ecosystem a lot on this show, almost at nausea, right? And that is because in my brain I think it's becoming a more popular word for me to discern what's going on and what we are doing here. Health is keeping an ecosystem healthy, right? When you get up in the morning and you shower and you eat and you go to work and you do your day and you come home and you take care of whatever responsibilities you have and then you get tired and you go to bed and it repeats, that's your ecosystem of your life. And the more you base it on tried and true techniques, the less you have any strife in your life, and you get everything that you want. In the ecosystem of, of the earth, we're talking about an ecosystem of survivability. You know, we know that uh, killing every fish in the ocean would disrupt the food chain for mankind and probably kill us off. We killed all the bees off, then we'll die eventually because nothing pollinates, which means all the vegetables that we want to eat in the world never create themselves. The animals that eat the vegetables that we like to eat their meat don't they die off and so the whole thing is this horrible chain reaction and so the emf problem penetrates absolutely every element of life on earth and that's something i need to inject into your brain here the first emf examples that we have are radio transmitting waves of sound in a second medium that is then retranslated translated back to the original medium and then we recreate the uh, the original voice right so I speak I vibrate air it hits a bladder inside of a microphone like this it goes up through the wires as a vibration it gets recorded as a vibration that gets sent to the other side via another carrier wave right it's translated back and then it vibrates the bladder in a speaker and it goes back and forth the first telephone calls, right? But most of you understand that, right? The big thing that we have to get over and to gain perspective of how we're going to have an opinion about this conversation is if someone told you or asked you the question, do you like the amenities of life that you have? And you say, yeah, oh, totally. And they say, okay, well, what if I told you that that amenity that you like a lot is actually killing you? Meaning whatever lifespan you were going to have, it's going to be shorter. What do you think about that? And you have a choice. Oh, God, really? Well, how much, how many years am I going to lose? Uh, about 20. Yeah, but it's random. You know, you could lose 40. Just depends on how much you get, how much you use it, how allergic you are to it, how healthy you eat to help your body repair the damage. You know, it's a crapshoot. And you're like, God, okay. People smoke cigarettes. They're inhaling paper. 
you know, a bunch of bunch of chemicals that act as preservatives. They use a, uh, a filter on the end, which is made of various levels of, you know, glass and insulation. They're making a choice, and they know they are. Anytime you put chemistry in your body, I put this tobacco loosely in the saliva in my mouth, and it displaces other things that should be there. That's where you start getting, you start rolling the die with your life, right? EMF waves have created amazing luxuries in this world, especially in the form of social communication. All of our cell phones use it, our radios use it, although I think radio's as dead as it could be, right? I think newspapers and radio are sort of in the same camp together. Think about how many things in your house are now wireless. Printers are wireless, computers are wireless, cell phones, your fire sticks from Amazon are wireless. You can't, you know, you can actually plug in a lot of things to have um, direct ether, direct ethernet connections to the outside world. You can turn off all of your networking in your routers, which we're going to talk about. But then you have all these clunky wires all over your house and certain devices like a fire stick don't have choices. A lot of companies are saving money by not putting ethernet cards inside their devices one it allows them to miniaturize the device and two it just reduces the expense by five bucks or so okay you know when radio was first invented you know you had am waves and they were operating at such power levels that you could listen to new york radio in london and vice versa and then the fcc the Federal Communications Commission, I guess is what it's called, they, uh, they started then brokering frequency ranges, right? And for those of you who don't uh, know what that means, it just means that when you were to tune your radio, they sell every single piece of real estate within the frequency range that they have. So AM sells it in the low bands, FM sells it in the high bands. Now, the human body runs on electricity. Obviously, we always talk about the Matrix reference where someone figured that out and created a brilliant little piece of science fiction around it. We don't create a lot, but we created enough, a little bit to keep us going. We talk about the electric sig electrical signals in our bodies. It keeps us going. Just the minute level of electricity that we harvest is the difference in keeping us from being a purely mechanical device. But understanding how your body is, is held together and what makes a, a human cell procreate, because there's two different types of cells. You have your neuron cells in your brain, and you have all your little suitcase cells that are doing the mitosis dividing that you always see on the microscope. Understanding your chromosomes. Understanding that it's 50% approximately protein patterns and 50% double helix nucleic acid chains. As long as you understand those basic pieces, and we're going to go through a full review so you understand how this stuff is actually really affecting you. Because it's one thing to come into your buddies and your family and go, you know, the 5G thing is absolutely insane. They're like, well, what are you talking about? What do you know about this kind of stuff? And if you listen to me, it'll allow you to laser focus your minimum amount of time to research this stuff. And you'll your brain will just pop if you haven't heard of this stuff. Now, the... Just a little bit of background on myself, outside of being a very inquisitive guy in general, my physics teacher's wife died of cancer. And what that did was that caused him to cannibalize my phys physics class with him and my radio, uh, what is it, no, sound waves and astronomy class that I took from him. And he always talked about how radiation affects the human body and he would dispel myths it was really funny we had tanning booths in town and tanning booths are always uh, especially back in the 80s there's still people that hang on to these uh, sort of false rumors about the machines and that they said you know hey this causes cancer and of course dermatology was popping out of the late 70s early 80s where they were essentially inventing reasons why you needed to use them and you know it's still just a complete charade to this day, but we'll get into that in a different episode. 
but he would he would literally put up all of the uh, light spectrum. Uh, he put he draw a line on the board and put up all light spectrums of sunlight and devices, X rays, and where these tanning beds would go. And he'd prove to you on a, on a board. He's like, look, there's no major problem. He says, you know, just don't go um, eight hours a day. But what that what he did was he in, he taught me how radiation affects DNA. He taught us how nuclear fallout, if you have an isotope that is floating through the air and you ingest it, how it it finds its way into some of your more nooks and crannies where iodine can also fill up those nooks and crannies and be a benign substance. You know, when you take iodine, you block radioactive isotopes from taking uh, root in your body. Right. Only bummer is you have to take it every day. Whereas an isotope gets in you and it's pretty much in there for the rest of your life. But what's interesting, other than the sun, okay, which has its own properties, which is 99.9% good for you, right? I get out here and you can see the sun on my head. The sun right now is penetrating my skull and it's got my pituitary gland creating vitamin D, which is going to keep me much more healthy than if I sat inside all the day because it's cold outside. In Russia, they in the northern hemisphere of Russia, they actually take little kids and expose them to tanning machines to simulate the frequency of light that makes the pituitary gland go go uh, uh, fire, and so these kids don't get jaundice, you know, get yellow, and get sick in general. But you have the sun, and then you have this bizarre thing, which is sort of nuclear fallout. And again, we all debate whether or not the nuclear bombs existed. I do want to say, and I'm not sure I got this out of my, uh, do nuclear bombs exist, or atomic bombs. I have the guy that, the, the kid that actually brought me to California at 17 years old because he lived right here, right in this area. His father witnessed, you know, nuclear bombs being blown up in Bikini Island. And so... You know, I have a, like, I, at least I had, he's passed away now, a first-degree contact of a man who watched several of them go off. Now, whether it was atomic or whether or not it was just some crazy dynamite ship, I don't know. But with EMF, we have a complete, we have a third category of radiation. It's a man-made product that's now broadcast into the atmosphere and what's interesting about it is you know if I smoke this cigar in my backyard and you're not within 20 feet of me let's even make it 100 feet of me there's a radius here then you're completely safe by the time this particulate diffuses into the atmosphere one uh, the smoke tends to go up and so it's over your head by the time you would ever ingest it within 100 feet but it's Sort of a proprietary thing. I'm hurting myself if I'm hurting anyone at all. Okay. However, if I were to take a toxic barrel of some horrible substance and put it on this back patio and pull the top off a 50-gallon barrel, barrel, and this stuff is heavier than air, and it starts just seeping out to the neighborhood, and everyone starts passing out and feeling strange and hallucinating and asphyxiating, let's just say. Get some good Monsanto Cyclone B in here. Then I am hurting everyone else and I go to jail. So there's legal precedence for someone removing your sovereign ability to stay healthy. And EMF wave transmission, no matter how you slice it and dice it, is an invasion of your health. And we know that, you know, that they, what they do is they measure how lethal it is because it all, you know, once something occurs from a, individual to individual, whether it be a corporation to an individual, whereby any part of your body is injured. It's interesting how typically there's a law that protects it, right? Battery. Assault is you run in your mouth with intent to hurt. Battery is the engagement of the actual physical conflict, and both are uh, governed by laws. That way you, if you put laws on assault, then you start to to reduce the, the smoke that turns into the fire that is the battery, right? But what happens with new technology is, one, initially we're stupid. 
you know, I don't know about the cigarette industry and how they or when they first understood that it was actually not very good for you. And again, I think maybe early cigarettes were made out of pure tobacco with a little white wrapper on the outside. Luckily, cigars have, have survived in being purely tobacco objects, and we don't inhale. We taste. But the FCC that has been formed to govern transmissions, both the content in the transmission and the methodology of the transmission, as I've been told, they do not employ doctors of any kind. Any of the physical standards that they profess have been given to them by the corporations that invented the technology in the first place, which means they're never going to tell you that there's any reason why they shouldn't make trillions of dollars off the technology. So we're not protected by these organizations. The FDA, maybe during Trump's administration will get a little bit better, but the FDA is bought off by the food and drug uh, pharmacy companies. You know, they are there to make the public feel comfortable with whatever the big corporations are selling. The EPA, they don't protect us. They don't protect us. The only thing that they want to do is forbid, uh, you know, outrageous problems in health issues. Right. They used to be good, and now they got corrupted. The best way to understand EMF is to think of a bullet splicing something in half. And this is how nuclear radiation hurts you, and this is how sun radiation can hurt you. Okay. And again, for those of you who believe that being in the sun is bad for you, uh, you know, there's some, uh, some bridges we can sell you. There's some, uh, was it topsoil we can sell you in Nice? But the extreme of all things is bad for you. The way that this, these waves of energy travel is through the utter shock and oscillation of the ethereal winds that exist in the world. Okay? There's a medium that carries all things. And again, you got to be careful getting into... Einstein, the, um, the wife beater plagiarist, who said there is no medium known as ether. You gotta, for that reason alone, just don't listen to the guy. Okay. Undo all the stuff you've ever learned from that dude. It's all mathematical conception stuff and not reality. Okay. The stuff that he has accurately predicted is based on a reclassification of ethereal particles, just so you know. So it's not that he didn't plagiarize a bunch of uh, people in Europe, these Aryan Germans and French people who invented everything that he invented, okay, and then he just denied their patents and then stole it and republished it, right? So we're going we're gonna to absolutely skewer and barbecue Einstein before this season's over, but there is so much corruption about that guy that I'm going to have to create a cheat sheet and I've only used that twice in any of the uh, 250 episodes where I'm going to have to post it right here in front of me like a teleprompter to keep track of the dozens of things that are so screwed up with this guy. But back to our show. When these waves of energy are transmitted from point A to point B, there's a frequency, which means of a sine-cosine wave. We measure those frequencies in length, Okay. For instance, those of you who are a little bit older who used to listen to AM versus FM and you have to travel through a tunnel, there's an AM wave can go into a tunnel and bounce around a lot better than an FM wave. FM wave, you listen into K-Rock here in LA, you go through a Pasadena tunnel, and boom, it's gone. Come out the other side, it's there. You listen to some of these Latin radio stations, you can go right through the tunnel, and it'll get a little fuzzy directly in the center, but then you come out and it's okay. And you never lose complete earshot of the song. It's interesting because of the length of the wave. All of these generations of technologies are increasing the frequency of the waves. And this creates more gigahertz that our bodies then have to tolerate and repair from. Okay, The major low-hanging fruit hurdle of any EMF wave to the human body goes as follows. And there's more to it. But your double helixes, those little ladders that twist inside your chromosomes, which again are half of what is in there, 
they can be broken. And they usually call it, they usually categorize it as a single or double splitting toxicity, which means the following. If you were to take uh, a DNA strand and you break it in half, okay, because you shot it with the bullet, sort of a photon reaction from the sun, uh, an electromagnetic wave from a broadcast station or your cell phone, or you have a radioactive isotope in your body, and it is emitting. It's so heavy. It's, you know, it's over 230 uh, atomic weight. And it can't hang on to its, its electron cloud because it's so complex. It's just banging into each other. And say, so knock a little electron out here, an electron out there. It starts penetrating your cells. It goes through the wall. It goes into this nucleus, and it hits the chromosomes, and it hits the DNA. It hits the nucleic acid chain. Most of the time, because nu- nucleic acid chains are brilliant, right, Certain letters cannot connect to other letters, all right? And so it can reconnect most of the time. And if it, if it doesn't reconnect, what ends up happening is the immune system comes in and goes, oh, we'll get rid of that guy because he's not a complete cell. He's some weird broken thing. And boom, your cell collects waste just like a human body and excretes it. And then it repairs because it has the protein patterns on the other side of the chromosome telling it, oh yeah, that we need to put the, you know, the chains back together. Create a new one. Split. And so the DNA splits into two RNAs, and then synthetically it completes the nucleic acids on the other side of the RNA, and you have two ladders instead of one. That's how you procreate, okay? Neurological cells are different. That is the basis for why this stuff starts causing us problems. The closer you are to an electromagnetic field, and you need to understand that cell phones are these devices. The big power lines that are above your house are these sources. Radio is a source. Cell phone towers, much more intense source. Your wireless routers in your house are a source. The wireless cards in your computers are a source. The power supplies in your laptops that sit on your lap are a source. And so this is where we get it. We have the, uh, the smart meters. I have one right there about 10 feet from where I'm sitting. Twice a day, that device broadcasts back to the network how much electricity I've used today. Okay. It's an amazing thing to think about the difference between today and what it was like, again, about 180 years ago. I say 180 because that gets rid of everything. We were sitting in a world with approximately anywhere from 8 hertz to 35 hertz. No more than that. Maybe if we got hit by a lightning bolt, it was much different. But to save that weird experience, we lived in almost no natural radiation of any kind, save the sun, right? Which is not operating in billions of hertz. And now what we have done is shamelessly polluted our airwaves with amazing levels. And, you know, what I had just named off in terms of devices is what you are aware of. You know, there's this over use of the uh, device HARP, which is this crazy antenna that the military uses to do all kinds of wild um, ion ionosphere experiments. And, hey, they could be nailing Los Angeles with a, a death ray. They could. And it's not like everyone fries immediately. It's just, wow, those people are going to die in 10 years. But what's going to happen with 5G is going to be mind-blowing. Okay. Absolutely mind-blowing. But we're going to have to make a decision about the amenities of life versus the value of life. If someone took away your cell phone and said, these things are deadly, we don't want you to have one. And we're no longer going to allow the sale of a wireless router for your house. And because we don't have any cell phones, we don't need cell towers. We're getting rid of those too. How badly is that going to impact your life? Really? I grew up in the golden age of America, at least the last stage of it, with none of that stuff. None of that stuff at all. There was no wireless anything. The only thing we had was radio. FM and AM. That was about it. The military has radar. 
but usually radar is broadcast in a very specific direction. And so unless you're flying in, in a war, you're not going to get any of that stuff. When you get into a plane, you do go up into the atmosphere enough, 35,000 feet plus, and you lose a lot of the natural protection of the atmosphere. And so you do get irradiated, like I always say. And again, I've, I've been told that flying from Los Angeles to Dallas, or sorry, not Dallas, well, I guess Dallas too. Uh, well, Denver, Colorado was the example I heard. You get basically the same amount of exposure that you would get in a chest X-ray. And there's a limited number of chest X-rays you're supposed to ever get in your lifetime, unless you die of cancer. Your body can repair from cancer. So go see my episode on cancer if you want to detoxify yourself. Go see the episode on toxicity or toxins to get yourself detoxed and use cancer episode to get yourself repaired. It doesn't matter if you have cancer. I mean, everyone has a cancer a cell, okay? So you do both of those, your brain's going to get better, your health is going to get better, you will extend your life, all right? But the internet has given us the sense that we have to have these things. Well, I have to be able to post a picture of myself to somehow prove to the world that doesn't give a shit whether I live or die that I have, I'm living a better life than they are, even though I'm not. And the reason why I want to post that is because I'm actually really not enjoying my life in most cases, right? You want 500 virtual friends instead of five real friends. And this is what we're fighting for. We're fighting to keep this crap this swill that does nothing more than degradate our ability to communicate with each other when we actually meet a real human being in real life. If you're an expert poster, you're the most witty uh, replier on any of the social media elements, you're able to take a photograph to make yourself look like you live on a different planet of pure bliss. But it's all a facade, and you meet someone in real life, and you're like, you can't talk to them because you don't know how to, because you never developed any skills in reality. This is what we're fighting for, the virtual proliferation of BS. I know there's a lot of you interested in what, what's going to be happening with 5G. I will say to you that, again, most of us have a 5G router in America in our house. So you're already being exposed to 5G. But what's going to take place is sort of a million X exposure to 5G. Now... There are varying levels of services, the LTE, the LTA, uh, 4G stuff, okay? As I have researched it, most of the carriers, cell phone carriers that are creating this, this craziness are sort of lying about how much data you actually have access to. There's these theoretical scientific experiments that say, oh, this new technology goes this fast, doesn't really matter what the real numbers are because you are being exposed to it. Whether or not your device is smart enough to grab the data, you're still being broadcast at all day long. So here are some of the illnesses that you get of being exposed to EMF waves. Uh, leukemia is being one of the most major sources of illness based on EMF exposure. There's a big giant antenna in San Francisco. Uh, it looks like a, the largest power tower you've ever seen in your life. And the rates, as I've had it uh, communicated to me by a scientist who is an EMF expert, who's also a biologist, he said that the, the amount of leukemia of the residents by this tower is 93 times higher at the base than normal people who live out in Montana. And the interesting thing is the radius away from this tower, it reduces exponentially uh, the further away you are from this tower. And yet California, the big, you know, liberal state that's trying to make sure no one's feelings are hurt, look completely the other way while these people are dying 10, 20, 30 years before they're supposed to. And children and elderly people are the two most susceptible human age ranges to die from this because a child's immune system isn't as, as intense as it could be. It's just the volume of, you know, cells in your body, your white cells, your T cells that will fight and repair things. So when you're teeny tiny, you have less repair coming into a particular unified force of energy, right? So the tower is not giving the child less energy. I mean, yes, they are a smaller target. So getting the same amount of per exposure 
per capita as a as an adult, but they don't have the strength to to fight it. Elderly people, it's the inverse. They're dying. They're slowly getting to the end of their life, and so they're dying before their time. You have to understand the globalists of this world toast champagne to these statistics. Oh my God, we are stopping the fertility of human beings, and we are killing their 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 newborns as soon as possible. And we don't want smart people to exist, so I love the fact, this is like David Rockefeller kind of talking, they love the fact that Silicon Valley has got a record level of autism due to these, this pseudo-intellectual devotion to, I'm going to make sure my kid has no problems, uh, vaccinations, immunizations, get their shots, right? But they're the first early adopters to all this EMF technology as well. The second thing is just pure fertility problems. A lot of young men put the cell phones either on their hips or in their pockets. And when they do that, the, their testes, their testicles, are very close to this EMF wave. The EMF waves penetrate the complex DNA of a testicle and kill the sperm. And it's been tested several times. You get a, a young man that has had no exposure to EMF in his testicle range, they take a sperm sample, high sperm count, put a phone in his pocket for a day, then take the sperm count, even an hour, and it is it has fatalities in the sperm count, as well as a lower sperm count, because the body is being attacked in that area, and so instead of creating sperm, it's repairing this these damaged cells. It's horrible. It's been proven several times, okay? Women put it in their pockets right over their ovaries. A pocket is over the ovary, okay? So the eggs that you have been born with, like a man, a man could have uh, corrupted testicles. And if he gets the cell phone out of his pocket, you can repair over time and you can probably have pretty clean DNA. A woman, a woman who has her eggs when she is born, if those get corrupted, then your child's going to be corrupted. Down syndrome stillbirths, deformities, mental impairment, the list is really infinite. Women uh, love the idea of putting the cell phone in their bra. Men don't have bras, and so we don't put them by our breasts. If a man does do that, they get so, so they're cancer. And the idea is, and it's, it's sort of a play on words, the cell phone creates cellular cancer, the cellular service creates cellular cancer. How ironic. Uh, I have a friend of mine whose wife died from keeping her cell phone in her chest on her left breast. And that's exactly where she got the um, corrupted cells. And then the doctor blew it off on the biopsy. And one year later, she had it extremely malignant and it killed her. He lost his best friend of 38 years due to cell phones. Adam Young from MCA died of the other cause which is the salivary gland cancer that is in your jawline. So if you put it up to your, up to your head, what ends up happening is, is that the, the power supply trying to create the electromagnetic magnetic wave around the phone, okay, so the way this works is it's creating a smooth wave around the phone. As the smooth wave bumps into the cellular tower wave, the smooth wave gets disrupted in a frequency. Okay, it would be... I don't even know what the analogy would be, but it's, uh, it's just the wiggle is acknowledged into a binary di digital stream, and then it translates into a phone call. The further you are away from cellular service, your phone is told to use more and more energy to create a bigger uh, Van Allen belt, basically, around your phone, and they can sense wiggle. And it's looking for the from the emission of a wave to the absorption of the wave, when the absorption gets interrupted, that's where you get the digital binary data, right? It's three bits, on, off, nothing. It boils the mitochondria in your cells. So you know when you look at a cell, the little round little suitcase with the nucleus in the center, all the stuff in the middle, the kind of carrier soup in the middle is mitochondria. When that boils due to utter friction of frequencies, it starts to literally agitate and rip apart the DNA that's inside your cell. You ever take a hot coal and put it in water and you hear it sizzle? What you are hearing is the slowing down of extremely fast-moving atomic energy, thermalization, 
retards back into ice. You know, it becomes still and inert. The salivary glands and all of the glands in your body are complex human tissue. They have very delicate apparatus that, that make the function of what they do do what they do. And so when you have, you know, like uh, you've, you've had this before when you've broken something in your house, the bigger and clunkier it is, the more you can just glue it back together. A big, thick vase that breaks, you could just glue it back together as long as you don't have too many what? Small, tiny pieces, little shards. But if you take a Swiss watch, open it up and hit it with the hammer, you know that your chance of straightening out all the little uh, sprockets in there and springs and dowels and stuff is going to be utterly next to impossible. Well, your glands are the ultimate biological Swiss watch of your body. Okay, your um, pancreas being the most complex one that I'm aware of, which is why when you get pancreatic cancer, you have a 96% of dying, 96% chance of dying. Only 4% of people who have pancreatic cancer can survive. And it's usually due to catching it really, really early in the process. There are, you know, central intelligence uh, and intelligence agency weapons that they will feed you an isotope somehow in your water supply. Or they could irradiate you with a device it's from like the, the curb of your house. And it can hit your chest and it will give you cancer in your various organs. And so very popular people like uh, um, the pre president of Venezuela dies of pancreatic cancer. Steve Jobs dies of pancreatic cancer around the time that he is saying he's going to take down Google. Right? Well, Google is a very important entity not to be taken down. And so when, the more he ratcheted up this idea, he's going to use his $100 billion at the time to sue Google to get rid of the Android device. He all of a sudden dies of pancreatic cancer. But he's also was, you know, he had it, he got cured of it, and then he died of it. If they want you, they're going to get you, okay? There's an epidemic in the United States of America of vertigo. Vertigo started about the time that we got these 4G and 5G routers in our houses. I have a very close friend of mine and a neighbor who's suffering from vertigo out of thin air. Vertigo isn't something that you catch, right? It's not like, uh, it's like catching whiplash. You don't catch it. But it's oscillating the inner ear and messing with the crystallization and the alignment of the inner ear, and some people are more susceptible to it than others. It's, it's a horrible thing to have because your, your movement in this world turns into nausea. So if you're suffering from some acute, recently acquired, and I would say over the last five years, vertigo, you need to consider turning off your wireless router technology and then use your router as a wire technology and wire up your house and just see if that helps. Shut off your cell phone at night. Put it in airplane mode. It still acts like an alarm clock even though it's in the airplane mode. Another thing that's popped up is that we now have a millions, tens of millions of people strung out on sort of Ritalin drugs, right? Your Prozac and Xanax because they are stressed out. They have a hard time maintaining thought. And it's because they are susceptible to electromagnetic radiation. The show Better Call Saul has a fictional character. I think, uh, I think the guy's name is Michael Keating. He was in Spinal Tap. He was, he was in Lenny and Squiggy. He played Lenny back in the old day. He plays a fictional character who is sort of paranoid about EMF waves, and he, he, he just cringes every time they turn on anything electric. And I, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting character. He does a great job in it, but part of me thinks, wow, this is the dumbing down, or this is the demonization of people who are actually suffering from these diseases. And, you know, this goes way, way back to the beginning of the radio. You had people reporting these kind of problems a long time ago. But they never, they, they didn't, the scientists probably knew exactly what it was that, who designed this stuff, but they're paid off to protect and not submit any paperwork on this. The amount of research that's gone into what I'm telling you over the last 20 years is off the charts. Okay, just look it up, all right? There's plenty of research in Europe. As globalist as they are, they are providing the empirical evidence of this. And Australia, of all places, has quite a few scientists that are putting this together. Now, before 5G 
got into the mix and before even Forge got into the mix. And, and those two technologies are going to make what I'm about to say even more intense. There are scientists out there, and again, I did not make this up in my backyard, okay? But understanding a lot about neurology and the basic physics of the mind, and then knowing enough about electronics to be very useful in the industry, the low frequencies that we use to operate our brains, okay, can be manipulated by cell phone towers. They can even be manipulated, technically speaking, by regular transmission towers, but what is a cell phone tower? It's a more intense, more complex, more isolated uh, use of upper band um, radio frequencies. And you, you should know that when UHF antennas were put on homes in the 70s, a lot of illnesses uh, came out of thin air. A lot of people had problems just, just having television broadcast to their house, believe it or not. But there is a range of neurological energy that the brain uses. The towers aren't allowed to operate at exactly, well, I shouldn't say this, they're not pre-programmed to operate at the exact range of the human mind, but they have the capability of being configured via firmware and software to reach out to the brain of a human being. I've mentioned this a couple times in different shows many, many years ago, or many, many episodes ago. feels like years. So imagine that they are going to create a 9-11 2.0, and they have gathered 20 years of evidence of how we discovered that it was an inside job, and now they're hedging all the bets and all the risk assessment of us discovering that the new one's going to be one. And again, look at all the massacres that they've done that have just, they've just gotten worse at it, in my opinion. But let's just say there's a separate group putting a lot of money and time into this, and the little rogue groups are doing the Vegas shootings and that kind of stuff. All right. A 9-11 is created to create terror, right? Well, imagine that they could take all the cell phone towers of various highly dense populated regions and create this terror frequency coming out of cell phone towers. What would be interesting is, is that we lose a lot of cell phone reception at the time because these towers would be cannibalized for this other frequency and then the phone calls would start going down of which they could blame on the notion that a lot of people are making phone calls that morning. And so, oh, I couldn't get my phone call to go through in Los Angeles, but I was terrified, which is why I was trying to make a phone call in the first place. Let's say they want to assassinate a very useful politician who is changing the world from globalist to nationalist, protecting the citizens of his country or her country. And they want us to accept it so they could broadcast an obtuse emotion of, of sort of docile happiness. Well, gosh, you knew they were going to kill him or her. You know it was going to happen. Let's go to the movies. Yeah, sure. So I think one of the biggest games that they have played, one of the biggest coups they've done with cell phone towers is to create a mind control technology. And again, these aren't my words. These are the top scientists that create and police EMF illnesses, EMF technology. They have the degrees in neurology. They have the degrees in electronics. They are cross uh, pollinating their information between the two groups and writing papers on this. Okay. Just look up the word study. You know, you look up anything that you think EMF dangers studies, cell phone tower mind control studies, and you will be shocked at the dozens of research groups that have put together dozens of papers. This isn't hocus pocus. This isn't tinfoil hat stuff. All right. The one thing that I haven't researched uh, that I would love to have put in this particular episode is the reason why they moved from analog cell phones to digital cell phones. Uh, when I got my first cell phone, I, I think it was 1994, the digital phones were horrible, and the analog phones, the flip phone, uh, Motorola phone, worked perfectly. I had a, um, a timing belt throw in my Mitsubishi Eclipse in 1994, driving down the 101, driving north on the 101 in the Bay Area. And of course, it blew my engine, and I had to get towed. Luckily, there was a tow truck right there, pulled me over the side of the road, but I had to get towed from there because this guy couldn't stop. And my digital phone couldn't make the phone call. My buddy does his flip phone, boom, it works perfectly. So a lot of the, the need to upgrade the technology seems to be Ridiculous, because Motorola had it down pat. The, the analog first digital, or sorry, first cell phones made phone calls perfectly. They never dropped. And there was a lot of shenanigans with charging you for roaming and all this other BS, right? When they tell you something, 
you know, costs a lot in a digital realm, like, oh, we're going to charge you for the bandwidth of your cell phone uh, or for your, excuse me, your internet service in your house. It's all hocus pocus. It's just making up this perception that they're actually spending more money on their side to transmit your data. It's complete crap. You know, your average power line, if, if not hit by a plane or something or a car hitting the pole or whatever, it would probably last, you know, two or three hundred years without needing to be replaced because they're super thick wires. They have no problem keeping their conductivity active. And so, it, again, it's a joke. Now, there's no need to, in this particular episode to review 3G because 3G is gone. It exists as an absolute throwback technology. So we are sitting in sort of a wide range of 4G services. And again, depending on where you live, you could get 3G, 3G quality of data transmission rates. Uh, and you can get almost up to like, they, they rumor it can get up to about 4.5G, you know, closer to the, to the 5G promises. But what is happening between the 4G and the 5G is a 10x to 100x multiplication of data transmit rates. And, you, you know, I'm sure there's some, uh, some geekier guys like me listening who want to get in all the bit rates and all that kind of stuff. It's really unimportant in this episode. We're really going to be talking about the, the pollution of your body with the electromagnetic frequencies that are coming at you. Now, I will say, in the 90s, for those of you who remember the old monitors that we bought back in the day, if you wanted a 20-inch monitor, which was a 4 by 3 ratio, it weighed 60 pounds. And the reason why it weighed 60 pounds was twofold. You had your old CRT screen in there, which is made of very thick glass with a gigantic copper wire capacitor on the back that, that fueled and capacitated the electrons necessary to get a phosphate you know, laser to fire to create the screen that you're seeing. And all the pixels glowed in this nice furry kind of star format. They weren't square. And then they had to put a... Um, so an RF, a radio frequency shield around it, which was a big metal case inside the plastic case that you saw. So that contributed to the overall weight because we had fairly good standards for, hey, you can't expose the human body to this much frequency. It's going to give people cancer. And so we hung on to that for a long time. Then you have, luckily, the OLED technology that's coming out. And in the next five or six years, you're going to see a major proliferation of direct LED surfaces which reduced the amount of electricity required to make a screen, make a picture. And so the beautiful upgrade that we've experienced are these, these new screens. However, the flicker rate of the of this screen technology became more suggestive than ever, which is what I've been talking about in recent episodes where when you look into your phone, you almost feel like you're being entranced. And there's a great movie released in the late 70s that a buddy of mine worked on that is called Lookers. Just look it up, L-O-O-K-E-R-S. And it was about the fact that televisions can transmit a certain frequency that stuns the audience so that they can't look away during commercials. Uh, what was also very interesting in that movie is that they predicted in the late 70s that commercials would be completely CG, completely computer generated. And you see there's, this, there's a studio in the movie where someone's playing a volleyball game and they're trying to pitch some lifestyle product. And... It's obviously, in the movie, real, photo, real photography of people playing volleyball, but the, the way it was narrated in the movie was that it was all CG. And you'll probably see that cannibalized here in the next uh, few years, I'm sure, with the Black Mirror or something like that. But it got down to the point where a guy figured out that this was a cabal, this was a conspiracy to zap people with this, this particular frequency that stunned you before you walked away from the commercial and they would jam the commercial in you. Today they use the sort of shock and awe technique of jacking up the volume to stun you. So the volume makes you go, ooh, like I was going to go pee, but I'm, I'm being traumatized right now by a, a volume jack up. And I'm going to be sitting there staring at least the first five seconds of the commercial. trying to get They're trying to get you hooked to it. It's a very real technique. That's why televisions with smart volume don't work. Because they don't want it to work. And... I just will put it out there, my hearing is like bionic. And so for me, when I get into a room where people are being loud 
or television's surge in volume, it just, it's painful for me to hear that. And I've got plenty of friends that are musicians from, you know, brass musicians all the way to big, you know, rock band musicians, like real, real rockers. And they, they have blown out their ears from sitting next to Marshall stacks or playing trumpets and having other people's trumpets in their ears. And they're not wearing any ear protection. And so everyone's kind of slightly deaf. Uh, they also have a lot of tinnitus, which is the ringing of the ear. And so they have to use, uh, in order to average out the amount of electricity that's being created inside the ear through abuse, which is a, a whiny ring that keeps them from going to sleep, they use televisions at night and play music such that it, it, cannibal, it, it basically cannibalizes the electricity that's being used as this ringing noise brings down that frequency and has a distributor over white noise, which is why televisions help people with tinnitus go to sleep, right? The frequency length of a 4G, average 4G tower technology is two and a half feet, like I said. The 5G network is half inch to an inch. So it's a very, very high frequency. The immediate problem, which is going to create the immediate Next problem is that anytime you have a tight frequency, you have a much reduced range of that particular antenna technology, or that transmission technology. So if you were to take all the 4G, or forget it, take all of the cell phone towers in the world and switch them over to 5G networks, you would probably, we, we would probably experience about a 95% loss in signal in the world because it's not enough uh, towers to transmit to all the different locations in the world because it's too tight and it can't bounce around a corner. If it hits your neighbor's house, it wouldn't make it into your house because it's such a tight frequency. You can't bounce off things that much because a tight frequency also moves at a faster velocity as I understand it, right? And so you have these, these, this, this reception problem. So how are they planning on fixing the 5G reception problem? They are planning on putting a 5G tower, which is going to be much smaller. It's about the size of a, a small book. I should say maybe an average book. They're going to put it every two houses in the world. Now, for those of you who have figured out where your cable comes from, you have an average telephone pole. I'm staring at one right now, and it comes through the back uh, we don't have alleys between this particular block of homes, and so we have these poles, these poles that go through our backyards between our property lines. The first two to three lines on these poles are for data, and which is usually your cable service, which is usually the carrier service for your internet. And then way up top, way up high, is where you have, I guess I'm looking at, uh, yeah, it's like the first two layers, which is three cables uh, carries your electricity and then down below we actually have four other ones that are carrying electricity so you have to climb up a pole quite quite a distance to touch power you could actually swing off the, the first two so what they're going to do is put these little boxes on those first two two wires and they have to be above ground which is another really sad cosmetic reality um, there was a really interesting moment when I lived in the Bay Area and they were throwing internet into the Bay Area once they got to ISDN, which was the precursor to the um, the uh, the two services, the cable and the one that the um, uh, the name escapes me at the moment, the acronym escapes me at the moment, the one that the telephone companies brought through. But we had such a push in the Bay Area to get the place wired that they were bringing Midwestern folks to the East Coast or to the West Coast, excuse me, to wire this. And I had a guy come in my house from Tennessee. You know, being from Kansas, we had a little kind of Midwest uh, camaraderie there. And he said, you know what's nuts about this? He goes, we are hanging stuff on your wires here in the Bay Area that we have deemed obsolete 20 years ago in Tennessee. I said, well, keep talking. What are you talking about? And he says, well, one, he goes, in Tennessee, we don't hang anything in the, in the air. We put it underneath in pipes so that we keep our neighborhoods looking clean. I mean, wow, right? I'm in the Silicon Valley with the ugly, stupid old technology, and you have um, Tennessee doing it right, according to this guy. And his whole thing is, is, look, it's way easier to maintain 
because you reach into the ground. You don't need a big truck to reach up and grab the line and move it around. If someone hits a telephone pole, it doesn't hurt anything with your internet communication. It hurts your power, but nothing else. Very eye-opening. So now I want you to imagine the level of um, EMF exposure if we have a little broadcaster every two homes. Now, on average, because it has a short distance of broadcasting, you're not going to be bombarded by um, hundreds of these things at once. You're only going to get broadcast at by a couple of these things. But what's interesting about my 4G router that I have in my house, which is about the same size of what these boxes will be on the wires, I can go across the street to my neighbor, across the cul-de-sac. I don't even know how far that is, probably 200 feet at least sit on that patio over there and I can use my internet in my house. I can drive almost completely down the street before I lose signal. It's amazing, right? So what are the guarantees? What is the big sale? All right. As I tell you about why this is great, I want you to remember this is us selling ourselves the amenities that we think we need to have. Again, in 1985, what happened? We had no internet that we were having access to. You could go to a college and get the internet, but it was always through some wired technology. When you called someone up and they weren't there, you got, it basically never did anything. It just kept ringing forever. If you called and someone was on the phone in their house, you got the busy signal. Uh, eventually, they came up with electronic you know, voicemail so it could kick over after so many rings. But we survived and we thrived, and we were much more social. We were much more happy. We had a lot more trade skills and talents. One of the biggest talents we had was communicating with other human beings. We didn't go uh, necessarily on a device and worry about news that, that you can't possibly change or affect. We only worried about our small little world. And some people, the globalists, will say, well, you were just conditioned xenophobes. That's what was wrong with you. No, that's what was right with us, right? If there's a serial killer going loose in upper, upstate New York, and I live in California, I didn't need to worry about that. I just need to worry about the one that's in my neighborhood, which travels through word of mouth, travels in the local newspaper, right? So the first guarantee is bit rate. It's going to be really, really fast. So your speed on your internet is going to get insane. The other thing that happens is that with 4G technology and below, there's only so many sockets in a tower that they can offer to devices in the neighborhood, meaning self cellular devices, before they run out of sockets. The sockets are limited based on the frequency of this two-foot wave, this two-and-a-half, two-foot wave, right? And so as, as they want to introduce self-driving cars and make absolutely everything an EMF broadcast center, I mean, every little device they wanted to make it. My mouse is wireless, right? It does a Bluetooth wireless thing. It works great. But I'm going to expose a little bit to that. The higher frequency of 5G is going to allow, um, there's, there's all kinds of weird estimates, from 10 to 100 times more devices that can be handled by a 5G network. And that way you don't have connectivity problems in your car driving down the street using wireless technology, cellular, cellular technology, excuse me, will not start driving into a field and kill people because it didn't lose con you know, contact or it won't, it won't pull over to the side of the road because it's lost uh, its driving information. The other one is latency. Now, when the internet first came out, latency was a death sentence. If you lost connection, you lost connection. For those of you who play massive multiplayer online games, you'll know that World of Warcraft type games when they lost connection with the server, there was no recovery. It just lost because the programmers hadn't figured out a lazier way to reconnect. You know, they pause your game, sort of, while you've lost connection. In World of Warcraft, you can't walk anymore. You can't do anything. You're just sitting there with an animation. And then once it reestablishes the contact in the 21st century, in the, uh, by this last decade here, you start walking again. The raid continues and everything's fine. It tries to catch up as much as possible. You know, you can die in the, time, in the meantime because you didn't defend yourself. You're very familiar with this. Well, that's happening on a micro level in 4G networks with your cell phones. You'll be transmitting a photograph, and it works great in, in one area. You go to this restaurant or the airport, and then you can't get anything to transmit because there's so much EMF wave um, 
disruptions going on. And again, in airports, there are devices that gag your phones from working in some areas that are more old because they, they have this fake fear that you using a bunch of cell phones on an airplane makes it fall out of the sky. Please. If there was any chance of that happening, even just the theoretical chance of that happening, you would have to turn off your cell phone getting on a plane because, you know, 200 plus people could die because five people are not turning off their laptops, not turning off their phones. It's not a risk, which is why a lot of folks do not put their phone on, on airplane mode. They just put it in their bag. They put it in their purse and it's still getting messages the entire time you're taking off and the entire time you're landing. So latency with a faster frequency allows quicker recovery. With having a transmitter every two houses in America, the amount of redundancy support is off the charts. And so at any one point in time, you probably have access, given again, my 5G router in my house can get across the street. Well, if I'm in the middle of my street and there's a transmitter behind my house and a transmitter behind my neighbor's house, plus my wireless router, plus two or three other boxes that are kind of in loose range to me, where's the latency going to come from? I can talk to a million arteries to the internet. The other little sad fact about 5G is that the amount of regulations on 5G basically don't exist. And so it's an open protocol for them to do whatever they want with it. Okay, I want you to refer back to potentially talking to the human mind. It could, and there's no regulations not to do so, despite all the warnings from the scientists that are the experts in this technology and the human mind. Now, for those of you super concerned, we have sort of a tug-of-war going on in the United States government. I have no idea what's going on in other countries. As I've been told, France, again, has pulled because of the ADD of children and the overall health risks of children, they have, in many of the schools in France, and I, I almost can't believe this because France doesn't seem to care about their low sperm counts and all this other stuff, they have supposedly started pulling all cell phone towers out of any reach of a school, as well as all the Wi-Fi out of schools, and everything's going wired. Now, I don't know how you tell a bunch of kids to turn their cell phones off when they come on the campus. Cell phones aren't, uh, I believe, very endorsed in any school around the world because kids can sit there forever doing stuff, right? But I know in America, you know, we don't take cell phones away from children when they go through the door of the school. Maybe in some private school, but not in average schools. In America, there was a push. There, ha there is a push right now from the corporations that are going to make trillions off this technology and the military-industrial complex that wants to use it to do all kinds of probably surveillance, but it probably will support a lot of military drones and all kinds of stuff. And again, cell phone towers do not broadcast up. They broadcast level and down. And this is one of the reasons why during 9-11, you know, this idea that uh, all these people are making phone calls, it, it technically should be impossible because the cell phone towers back then uh, weren't even 3G. And so you have a problem being, you know, they weren't at 35,000 feet in most cases, but you would be traveling so quickly that as soon as you made contact with the tower, you would have lost contact with the tower because you're moving so quickly, right? So the idea that these phone calls were made possible doesn't make any sense. And American Airlines finally put repeaters inside their um, jets in 2004 offering a service. And so just keep that in your bag of facts, right? But there's been a, um, a delay. The, the corporations in the military industrial complex, as I have read it, okay, wanted 5G to be the standard in 2020. And as I've read it, this has been put on hold for an evaluation. Now, the reality behind this delay is not being communicated publicly uh, in any major way. But it might be that someone at the top, especially with this renewed government that is predominantly prioritized around the people instead of around this, these super PACs that are globalists, they may be taking a closer look at the biological implications. I read one report that said that California State is concerned about the health risks of these networks. In California, it is illegal to drive your car and put the cell phone up to your ear. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that people are um, 
wrecking their phone, wrecking their cars because they're paying attention to their calls more than they are in their cars. You know, your, your mind wanders and that kind of stuff. I'm not personally convinced that that's the issue. What I think is more dangerous is the texting. Because when your brain is trying to discern language, translating symbols into meaning, you are using a lot of process power, whether or not you realize it or not, and driving and operating a vehicle at the same time, it becomes a lethal combination. But in terms of holding a cell phone to your head and driving down the street, looking ahead, looking straight ahead, I think that poses a lot less danger, however, driving-wise. But your health, it's bad. So by them passing a little law, for those who are willing to follow that law, which only a handful are, there's less exposure. I had a really funny experience uh, for those of you who may be debating whether or not cell phones have any cancer risks at all. Again, it's not the phone call itself necessarily, it's the power supply in your phone, as I've said for years. My daughter, who never really expressed much of an opinion about it, but you know, she's got to look at her old man every once in a while and kind of go, man, you believe a lot of weird crap, right? She went off to college and did a report. Maybe it was the tail end of high school. I think it was the first year of college. She did a report on cell phone cancer, and she was able to uncover, because she sent, me, she sent me the report, she was able to uncover more photographs of conclusive proof of breast cancer and brain tumor cancer than I've ever seen, ever. She wrote a great report on it. So, hooray for our side, right? So what can we do about all this information? Because it's sort of, it's sort of sad, right? It's, we've created some amazing inventions, but we have created sort of this slow, lethal technology that, you know, it's, there's a couple ways to look at this, right? You know, a lot of people can blow stuff off until they're sick, until they're dying, and until they realize that they have perhaps become sick earlier than they should have because of technology. People who, you know, we've all detoxified out of diet drinks and sugar substitutes and all kinds of toxins, right? Well, there's alternatives. You don't have to drink diet soda that's has aspartame in it. You don't have to brush for fluoride. You don't have to do a bunch of things. GMO foods. You can get organic foods. With this particular option, there's probably about, depending on your use of technology, if you're an older person, you probably have 60 to 70 percent alternatives to this toxicity of EMF waves. If you are younger, you probably only have 20, 10 to 20 percent alternatives because you're so hooked on cellular devices, right? I'm unaware of any technology where we plug it into the bottom of our phone and we can tether off of an Ethernet connection, right? Um, there might be a way to route that through your computer. Um, I don't think that that's what they want to do. The whole idea is they get a kickback from the cellular programs that you sign up for in some cases. The other thing is that if society goes along with all this technology, which we have as a group, I'm not immune from this, then the, the exposure of the technology in your home is not something you can completely control. Now again, the, the meters on the side of your house, uh, again, they're only broadcasting a couple times a day, so probably not the most lethal thing, even though it is definitely broadcasting on that particular frequency. The people in San Francisco who are at the bottom of that tower are getting bombarded second to second. That's why they're 93 times more likely to die of leukemia, as well as other things. The types of cancer you can get is, again, brain tumors is a big uh, byproduct of EMF waves, proven. Thyroid cancer, proven. Salivary gland cancer, proven. Testicular cancer, breast cancer, uh, potentially skin cancer, you know, but it's sort of once you get the insides of your body messed up, the outsides, well, that's a more of a cosmetic thing. And even though we have alternatives to fight cancer that, that we've now discovered over the last several years of the Internet releasing sort of the information about this, you know, that would be the only thing that they could do is say the cell phone companies lobby the medical industry to get rid of their dogma, get rid of their chemotherapy, and start telling us how to live cancer-free. And then it's like, okay, EMFs cause cancerous cells, but 
take this magic pill and it will help your immune system kill all the invaders. And then we can live happily ever after. We've counteracted this, this problem. So some of us will have to, to do that to stay healthy. But your children, I think, is where it gets really real for people. For those of you who have amazing relationships with your parents or older folks who are going to be susceptible to this, that'll also bring it home. But there's nothing that brings it home more intensely than a child. So for my household, for instance, I can probably throw a 50 to 60 foot cable into my office from my router and shut off the wireless capability of my router and simply use the wired and use a router, uh, sorry, a switch to give me more ports. That's what I do on the back of my television is that I use a wire technology to fuel my televisions, Netflix. There's no wireless coming out of my television. But unless I can tell my television, stop looking for a wireless service, then it's still going to bombard me with its wire cart. Now, Outside of cell phones and cell towers, the nice thing about even a cell phone, for instance, there's a certain proximity around the device where it starts to become safe or safer. For instance, a laptop with the power supply, if you put it on your lap, okay, the power supply from the computer and the wireless router, but mostly the power supply, is going to be essentially not good for the cells in your thighs. What's the average distance from a computer you can be? It's really 8 to 10 inches. 8 to 10 inches and you are pretty much in the safe mode. And so you'd have to sit on a desktop with your laptop so it's away from you, not on your lap. And, you know, your hands are then in the proximity. But your hands are pretty tough. There's not a lot of complex glandular organs right in your hands. There's none. And so at that point you're attacking your blood cells. You know, leukemia is a blood disease. And so you have to take into account how that works. Now, again, wires are a super pain in the butt. Holding the cell phone to your head. Well, as I've said several times on the show, I use an Apple headset on my Android phone because the quality is higher on an Android headset, or excuse me, on an Apple headset than any other technology I've been able to find. There's people that use the Bluetooth earpieces. It's a lot less EMF waves than putting the cell phone to your ear, but it does... It's so close, it's right on top of your cellular tissue, and you have all kinds of very important things in your head, in your ears, and so it might lead to tinnitus. might be an extra way to injure your inner ear and all the mechanisms that translate vibration into electricity. So going wire-based is probably the very best thing you could do for your immediate home. Uh... I recently was gifted a Amazon Fire Stick. And so the problem with the Fire Stick is that as long as it's powered up, it needs a wireless connection in order to work. There is no Ethernet card in the back of this thing. So if I want to use that particular service, I have to unplug it if I'm not going to use it and turn the power off. I could leave it plugged in, but I could pull the power off or just unplug it from the ground. Maybe I have a different power strip down there to get rid of that. But then I'm going to have to visit my router firmware through the internet browser and tell it to turn on the wireless connection for that particular viewing experience. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. After this recent research, I'm willing to do that. You know, there's a lot of talk about high tension towers carrying power by your house. Well, you know, Because there is so much power going through those wires, you are getting bombarded in your home with a light, constant stream of electrons. And that is, uh, or electromagnetic waves, I should say, technically speaking. I've known friends of mine that live next to them. They got houses for cheaper because they live next to them, and they've had issues with birth defects, very severe ones that took the life of their children within two years. You know, it's hard to say whether or not the, there's a connection there. Could have been that the mom, before we knew any of this stuff, had the phone in her pocket and she messed up a particular egg. It's a little, you know, it's possible. This particular family went on and had another child and had a perfectly normal child. But again, we, when you have a, a, a field of 
energy that is messing with the brain's ability to communicate with itself and people are going into ADD, they're having memory loss issues, they're having just basically continuous thought problems. How do you how are you going to find the culprit that's making that happen besides changing the, the inside of your house to see if everyone sleeps a little bit better? So what I'm committed to do is wire my house completely and the only bummer that's happening here is that the if I want to watch media on my phone, I don't have infinite minutes because most carriers don't have it. And if they do, they throttle you anyway. So I may need to switch to a carrier that has infinite minutes and then at night put my phone into, well, put it this way, anytime I'm not uh, accessing heavy media or I'm asleep, I'll put it into airplane mode to keep the wireless router turned off in the front of my house. Now, I keep my wireless router on the other side of my home. What's amazing is, <clears throat> is I'm able to get 25 megs per second in my office that's 50 feet away. And I'm able to get, again, a weak signal, but it's fairly decent across the street. So there's a lot of different routers. I could have a neighbor that puts a router on the other side of uh, the, the uh, not adjoining wall, but, you know, it's a wall. It's probably 15 feet away from my wall. And so I'm getting bombarded by their router. It just depends. So this is a very complex issue to get rid of. I will say that probably getting the router in your house disabled is going to greatly reduce and I mean maybe in the um, you know just as a hunch feeling maybe 60 to 80 percent of the exposure that you have to wireless technology in your home again your meter I did the research on that two times a day you're okay you know it'd be like kind of if you're standing right next to it you're probably getting the same kind of radiation you get at a body scanner in an airport I personally have never gone through a body scanner in an airport that I can remember and I don't do it necessarily because I'm going to die of it. I just don't do it out of matter of principle. And it's sort of a warm feeling later on to say, you know, I've never been through that. Hopefully this episode helped you get sort of your, your mind together with what's going on. Um, you know, having a repeater every two houses, or, or I should say a 5G tower every two houses. And it's not going to be a tower. It's going to be a little box on the back of the pole, wires, the lower two wires on your house you are going to have to lobby your senators and what have you, but I guarantee you that's probably going to have a 1% effect. A 1% effect. I've been told that you can, in California at least, petition the power company to take these electronic ones off, off the side of your house and get the manual ones, and then they will come by and read it every once in a while. When I learned that it only broadcasts a couple times a day, I'm not terribly concerned. I wouldn't be terribly concerned if I did it every hour, but that's unnecessary, right? It's overuse of the technology. So hopefully you're, you're on board with all this, uh, all the options and all the technology here. If you have any questions, put them in the uh, comment section down below. If you have good videos on YouTube, put them down there. Uh, of the ones I've watched on YouTube, the guy or girl will be really informative up to a point, and then they start meandering in a loop and saying the same exact thing over and over again. And I think that that's kind of injuring the movement. It almost makes you feel like, you know, morons are the only people that uh, petition against this kind of thing. And so I don't want to really propagate views. If I find a really good video, I'll put it up there. If you dig the show, please go to deepthoughtsradio.com. All the feeds are there, video, audio. It's on iTunes, Google Play. You can support me on Patreon if you like. For those of you who are, thank you so much. I think it's about all I'm going to say. Take care of yourself and someone else, and I'll see you in the next Deep Thoughts. Over now.